Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Flow Show. Uh, another day under the bridge. Um, see what uh, fun and games is going to be happening today. Um, it's ECB day, so let's bring in the other two. Morning, Kay. Morning, Stell. No, we're the other two now, are we? Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> the, other, the other two are three. <laughs> the three stooges. Did you say yeah, uh, you have water under the fridge? <laughs> the what? Did you say you have water under the fridge? Oh, under the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Yes, the three wise monkeys are here again today. <laughs> uh, Stick your, your world straight <laughs> in, the, in trading. Uh, oh, oof, it's Thursday. It feels like we worked about eight weeks this week. Um, let's get uh, straight into it. Oh, I can't even find my notes now. Where have they gone? There they are. Right. Oof, I am knackered. Um, China is still likely to cut its RRR following um, a cash, the cash injections, says the Shanghai Security News. They say the probability of RRR cuts still exist, but the probability of short-term interest rate cuts is still low. So looking at those MLF uh, rates and MLF rates to be kept unchanged, but the... Uh, Sword of Damocles about uh, reverse re reserve requirement ratio cuts still hanging over there. Um, it's all going to depend on the economy in China and how it uh, recovers. Uh, if it does recover strongly, those RRR cuts will be pushed further to the back of people's minds. Um, Japan, we're still hanging around for this wage stuff and the Japanese Center for Economic Research, um, they estimate the wage hike the 2023 wage hike at around 3.05%. Um, that's higher than uh, a lot of them were expecting at 2.85%. So uh, a whole 20 pips up on that, which doesn't sound like a lot, but in Japanese terms, it uh, is quite big. Um, Kay, you had anything more concrete yet on any of these uh, wage deals? We still were uh, uh, watching and waiting. No, I'm exactly where you are. At, um, yeah, so... <laughs> It um, seems that uh, I, I, I don't know how much they uh, they talk to each other, all those uh, bosses and unions, but uh, putting it just above the three the three percent mark here. Um, I don't know if it's going to change much if it really comes out there. I guess the yeah. market is already now um, assuming that it will be uh, around this uh, three percent mark. So uh, let's uh, let's see what where the final results are and then uh, perhaps the market will uh, will take a, a bit of direction on, uh, on on the back of it and expectations for the Bank of Japan but uh, so far it's it's rather trading um, risk um, yeah it, it's it's rather trading risk um, the interesting thing though which I would like to mention is that we are second half of March uh, we are in the final month of the uh, Japanese fiscal year and uh, we could start to see some flows in the, in, in the yen market uh, appearing for people uh, having to close their um, their accounts or, or make the accounts. And, uh, and, and we, we often see decent flows deriving from it. I haven't got a clue whether the uh, importers will, uh, will take the upper hand or the, or the exporters. This, this year is really um, blind darts to, to, to know what those uh, flows will be. Um, but yeah. we'll have to to keep a close eye on what's happening in the yen, what's happening in the yen, uh, um, in the Nikkei and the um, what's the other one, the topics and uh, and what's going on on the uh, Japanese yields front. So um, we we have uh, we are now in this in this last part of the uh, of March, and uh, usually, as I said, um, expect some flows to uh, to come into the yen market. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, staying in Japan and a bit of data out overnight, um, machinery orders coming in fairly strong um, to kick off the year, 4.5% year on year, 9.5% month on month. Um, the manufacturing side of the economy hasn't been looking too hot um, compared to services, but some decent numbers coming in there anyway. Um, trade balance data, which for me is just still all over the shop, um, exports. Still coming in a pretty strong number, 6.5%. Uh, 
Um, imports also quite strong, not as much as expected uh, in both counts, but still producing some decent numbers there. Um, for me, the, the the trade balance stuff is it's going to take a while to settle down. I think, um, given everything that's gone on, virus and all the inflation and everything, so I'm not drawing too many conclusions. There could we see a bit of a, a shift into the financial year end, K, on on these numbers as well. Um, well, I mean, they 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 are not really. Um... They're not, not. They're not really attached to 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 fiscal year end. Um, I don't know. March is going to be whatever whatever happens. A, a, a strange month. So when those numbers come out, I'm I'm not even sure that uh, more than an algo brief we should uh, pay attention to it. Yeah, it it could be affected by year end, but I think it's more the the it's 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 a rolling thing, right? Uh, exports. Yeah. Reports. Um, it's not because you're at the end of the fiscal year that you're not going to import or export stuff. So um, I, I don't know. They may be a little bit distorted, but I, I don't have out of experience any recollection that March is a, a, a big distortion month for um, for the trade balance. What we have to note, though, is that uh, both um, imports and exports have uh, have slowed down. Exports uh, actually higher than, than, than last month. Um, yeah. But imports slowing down is is normally not really showing a, a, a very high activity level locally. So it's not. Yeah, the, I mean, the only, the only reason I ask about that is because, mm. uh, you know, sometimes some countries, some firms, they can book a load of, you know, buying or selling just before the year end, financial year end, just to mm. book it under those accounts rather than shift it onto the, the New Year's accounts, de- depending on what they want to do. But uh, it's possible like you say, that- yeah, I think then then we have to look more at what's happening on the on the current account balance than really what's uh, happening on the on on the actual um, trade balance. I I guess um, that that's going to be more uh, probably more affected. Um, but yeah. yeah, look look especially what's happening uh, in in the next two weeks. I'd say in the, in the bond and. Uh, and the equity market as well, and uh, and and flows on the, on the end. I'll try to raise a couple of antennas to see if uh, anyone is expecting anything spectacular. Yeah, uh, yeah. But anyway, cool. yeah. I I don't think trade balance. I think more the current account might be uh, might be affected by uh, end of fiscal year. Cool. Um, over to New Zealand and GB, GBP, GDP coming in slightly softer than expected um, on the quarter down 0.6% versus the 0.2% prior year on year down 2.2% versus the 33 expected. Um, again, this is a bit rear view mirror stuff because um, now we're just about to end Q1 uh, and we're still reporting Q4 numbers, but the market's going to take it uh, for what it is. Um, there has been a bit of selling of the Kiwi by leverage funds um, since the GDP and uh, over some of the other bits and pieces happening in New Zealand. Um, they sold uh, leverage funds were selling Kiwi also on the rumour that S&P might take a hit if it's a current uh, account deficit remains too big. Um, and they've been selling those funds for the last couple of days, it seems so. Bit of selling pressure on the Kiwi at the moment. Um, looking at the data from yesterday in the US, um, before we tick into the mess that is Credit Suisse and stuff today, um, retail sales coming in better than expected, um, but it's not wholesale good. Um, if you look at the core sales, that's the control group, that came in pretty well, but retail sales headline number came in as a negative, just slightly worse than expected. Um, Year on year, we're slightly worse as well. Um, If you strip out the gas and autos, retail sales were flat, um, which shows you a bit of what was driving those as well. Um, PPI came out as well, um, and pretty much what we saw or what we've been seeing in inflation coming down lower and lower um, in pretty much all the counts there. 4.6% 4.6% on the headline number, was expected at 5.4, so a bigger drop than expected there. Uh, Empire State Manufacturing was another bit of a crater number, uh, expected a minus 8, and it came in at minus 24.6. This one has been a bit volatile of late, um, so we have seen it a bit up and down. So 
maybe not drawing too many conclusions from that. Uh, we do have the Philly Fed today, the second manufacturing data of the month. So keep an eye out for that one to see if there's a bit of a trend going on um, in that one there. Um, MBA mortgage apps were out uh, early and again a bit of a uptick in applications the rate coming off a touch from from the prior rate um likely as everything will fall out from last week and uh, this week are going to be planning to these numbers probably i wouldn't be surprised if that number comes in lower again next week given the market's mood about fed rates at the moment um but overall taking it as a whole this one's a bit messy it's not given any real clear signals right now for the uh, housing market in the in the US. It was uh, trending up beginning of the year. It then dipped a bit. It's now back up again. Um, so I'm not drawing much from this one at the moment. Um, right, coming over to the mess, that is uh, Credit Suisse. Um, <laughs> what a funny day yesterday. So Credit Suisse were in trouble. Uh, the Swiss National Bank declined to comment um, early doors. The French finance minister declined to comment on the sharp declines in French stocks because of the Credit Suisse mess. The Bank of France declined to comment in the drop in French bank shares. Credit Suisse CEO came out and says that government assistance isn't a topic for the bank. And that uh, the material weakness uh, people are referring to is in reporting financial reporting controls. They don't have an impact on financial results. Um, he said, we are a strong bank and overshoot all regulatory requirements. Our liquidity base is strong. He says the situation in the US is not comparable and factually has nothing to do with Credit Suisse. Um, later on that day, according to the FT, they went screaming to the SMB and government asking for a show of support. And then the regulator, FINMA and the Swiss National Bank came out with a 50 billion Swiss liquidity backstop. So, so much for uh, government assistance isn't a topic for the bank and uh, that our liquidity base is strong. Obviously, that's what bank runs do to you and when people cane your bonds and your CDSs and everything else. Um, the SMB, so they offered this 50 billion liquidity backstop and uh, the statement said there's no indications of a direct risk of contagion for Swiss institutions due to the current turmoil in the US banking market. Um, did, what they really it have to, did they really have to say that when you deny something, it's it's the, the, the last straw, right? When just before it happens. So that makes me very nervous. <laughs> well, it was, it was a strange situation all day because no one, no one stepped up from the government or the SMB, um, you know, likely because they spending their time on the phone wondering how big a pile of shit they were dealing with. Um, yeah. It's not as if they didn't sort of act like the Fed and come rushing out really quickly and, and the Treasury to say, yep, yeah, you know, we're on top of it. We, we're making our moves. We're putting the backstops in. It all seemed to be a bit half-hearted, a bit delayed, a bit non-fussed about it all. Um, yeah. You, is it you know why, that? right? Because the, the best case scenario is for confidence to come back without any intervention. So basically, we've, we've had the situation now with uh, Credit Suisse, um, for many reason, um, reasons, I'm guessing, but the, ma the main problem was that I'm sure that there were um, many of the clients pulling their funds uh, like there's no tomorrow. And um, uh, I heard of a uh, certain uh, ship owner here in Greece who pulled 100 million, you know, just like that. So I'm sure there's many, yeah. uh, ma many organizations and, and people who, uh, who got scared and got their money out. And what they want, ideally, is a... Um, an orderly return of confidence without an intervention. That's what they're going to try and get. Obviously, they couldn't get it yesterday. So at the end, uh, even though they were saying, oh, our liquidity is great and all that, I mean, it can't change within an hour, right, or two. Yeah. So they're, they're trying to do that. And when it fails, they go to daddy and say, please help. It's, it's a bit of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know, if the, if the SMB regulators don't say anything because they, you know, to try and give the impression there's nothing wrong, the market panics and says there must be something wrong because they're not to saying anything and yet if they do act the market says well you're acting because there's something wrong <laughs> so you can't yeah in one yeah i have no sympathy for them but in in that situation you can't really win can you but 
I think it's, it's what I it's 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 what exactly right, and it's what I said yesterday. You know, when there's smoke, there's fire, and you can't get away from that. And you know, do I think the situation is contained? No. Uh, you know, I, we we don't have any proof of that yet. You know, all we have is yeah. an American bank failing, a Swiss big Swiss bank uh, getting a effectively a government backstop, and uh, you know, other European banks being. Um, uh, their stocks get, uh, suffering, and uh, and you know you have banks like Deutsche and uh, you know uh, uh, BNP or whoever else. I mean, they are yeah. huge. You really don't want to have trouble in those banks. You know, those banks yeah. are essentially the, the country, right? The government. So, um, yeah. I, Do I, I think it's contained. No. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't hear more about uh, fingers being pointed at Deutsche Bank. Uh, they must have been sitting in a in a dark corner, hoping everyone ignores them. Um, because people people need to understand, okay, Credit Suisse has a reputation at the moment, not a good reputation. They have a reputation for bad trades, bad investments. Usually if there's something gone wrong in some financial market somewhere, you can bet your bottom dollar they've got exposure to it. Um, it's the way they've been for, for several years now. I mean, on, on Friday when the, the US banking stuff first started, I think I put in the chat room, I wonder how much uh, exposure Credit Suisse has to it. That's the reputation they have. And so someone or someones have taken a pot shot at Credit Suisse because it's the path of least resistance if you want to try and uh, force another bank into into problems. Um, but now it looks like we may be over the worst touch wood um, unless there's any further fallouts that we don't know about. And... It's quite surprising how quickly this is all getting resolved, which is how it should be, shouldn't it? Because this is what regulators and central banks have been building all these tools for for the last decade for these sort of problems. So is it a surprise that we could be over this sort of thing pretty quickly, like we were in the UK with the uh, with the pension fund stuff? Well, are we over? That's the thing. I don't think, uh, well. I know, I'm not saying we're, we're all the way through the other side, but, you know, yeah. the, the very first of it. Uh, potentially, yes, potentially. I, I, I'd be. <laughs> I, I always. I, I'm always a little bit uh, concerned when I see situation like this, and it's, it's been many, many years that we haven't seen a situation like this. And I remember 2008 very, very well how it started. So I, you know, excuse me for being a little bit uh, cautious. <laughs> many years. It was. It was six months ago, mate. The uh, UK pension stuff. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Kay, what are your thoughts on it? Are we uh, over the worst, uh, at least today? Too early to tell, but um, I understand the silence yesterday, as I was also saying in the room, and, and um, sometimes uh, not intervening too fast is, uh, is, a, is a soothing, uh, a soothing uh, factor for, uh, for markets as well, but not specifically yesterday. But um, I think... Um, Two early declarations of anything would have perhaps done worse than than, than good, um, because that's saying uh, to the market, "Oh yeah, this is uh, it's panic stations everywhere." So um, I think it's it's okay that they took hours to 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 react. They didn't take several days, right? They took uh, hours to react. So uh, that's. But are we over the worst? I I I, I don't know, but um, if if I read. The, the 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 numbers. Let's put it that way. If I if I look at articles who, who produce the numbers uh, without um, and 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 stripping out the noise, you know, of uh, oh they are going down under or uh, there's nothing wrong. Um, if you strip out all of that, the numbers say that they are still well capitalized because they are also um, or, or they should at least respect the. Um, the levels of uh, of reserves uh, that the BIS uh, uh, put in place, I think it's BIS two or three or whatever, which came out uh, after the, uh, the, the the crisis. Um, so yeah, I I don't know. I think it, it, okay. SVB to me was more a storm in a glass of water than uh, than 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 Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse is bigger because of all the ramifications, and we have seen yesterday, as you already said. Um, European bank stocks getting hit very hard because they probably have 
a lot of exposure, even though they, they all came back saying like, oh, no, we reduced exposure and the U.S. reduced exposure. Uh, Spanish um, um, officials came out saying that they have less than one billion. Exp- um, their banks, uh, Spanish banks, have less than a billion exposure to Credit Suisse. So it, it, could the worst be over? Yes. Is it completely over? Too early to tell, I'd say. Um, but we have seen, if you look at how the markets react, um, it's pretty much like I said in the in the room that you had like those those two reasons why the Swiss franc, for instance, uh, strengthened. It's first of all risk of everybody piles into Swiss franc, um, and then secondly, um, those what I said they they might have had to to repatriate some funds as well to um, to uh, to cope with uh, with all the withdrawals. So uh, that was the 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 impact on the, on the Swiss franc. But then. If you look at it in a, in a, in a second part of of th- or third part, is that all oh, right? I mean, there's still problems in uh, problems for a Swiss bank. So and then the 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 market uh, pretty uh, pretty quickly turned around, and we closed the day uh, um, much higher in in Euro Swiss, for instance, than than where we started it. So um, or, or or about where we started it. Yeah, so I th- the worst may be over, but I think the, for if you look at the currency, the worst for the Swiss franc may not be over. Um, yeah. that's that's my view on it. Yeah, well, I'm going to say the worst is over in terms of CS for now. I think I throughout the whole of yesterday, I could not find a reason, see a reason, get given a reason why they were under attack, like a specific reason. If they had turned around and said they had, you know, a billion dollars or two billion dollars exposure to uh, to SVB and US banks or something like that. Fine, you, you've got a definitive reason. I think this was really just an attack on one of the the weak links in the European banking sector. Um, always is going to be a target, you know, whether UBS buy them or not. Um, always comes around. I think this was just purely an attack on one of the, as I say, one of the weakest links. Um, does it mean there's there's not going to be further fallout? Absolutely not, but I don't see them going to the wall. At the very worst, it might hasten an, an actual sale or someone coming in and, and buying them up. Because you can bet your bottom dollar, if they did go pop yesterday, there would be a queue as long as you're, you're armed of banks stepping into uh, Hoover up the bits and pieces. Um, so, yeah, that was my thought. And, you know, that was one of my reasons I've traded euro dollar that way yesterday, uh, which uh, we'll talk about uh, when we look at the prices in a moment. Um, just looking at some of the other stuff and, and just sticking to credits. Yeah, go on, mate. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I don't know if you, if you, I didn't know whether you were going to move on. Just, just one, one thing. Why I'm now looking at probably sell Swiss franc on a decent rally is that the result of all this, I can see more regulations, meaning more mm-hmm. or less opacity in the in the Swiss banking system again, and and we know why. The Swiss uh, Switzerland is such a big parking place for um, wealth and, uh, and and global, yeah, from from the whole the whole world um, for wealth because um, there's still that more opacity in their system than uh, um, than, uh, than than in other countries. And one of the fallouts of of this this whole scenario, this whole um, thing is that um, there there could be some more regulations coming in and. Uh, if wealth managers or if um, big money, uh, well, call it wh- wherever it comes from, um, they might not really like it, and uh, and then we we could see some more um, Swiss franc weakness. But that's something that that when it gets confirmed, if it gets confirmed, then I think that may weigh a little bit on the, on the Swiss franc. But um, that's why I'm I'm also saying the whole story might not may not be over. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and on that front, um, it was said, it had been reported yesterday that some of the US's biggest banks um, were cutting exposure to Credit Suisse for prior months. Um, whether they smelt something coming, um, who knows? The only ones who know are the ones who are on the inside. Um, but that has been a story reported yesterday that uh, a lot of exposure was cut in Credit Suisse. Um Coming over to the ECB, and uh, obviously it's ECB day today, which we'll get stuck into. Um, former VP Vitor Constantio said the ECB should hike by 25 pips at most this week. 
Um, today, it's really a bit of a coin flip for rate expectations. It really is literally 50-50 whether they go a 50 or a 25 today. Um, very little real expectation for a, a complete pause, um, but it's still a risk we need to look at um, as well. But we, again, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, looking at the Fed <clears throat> and the rate expectations have really been all over the shop there as well. Uh, well, across the board. And partly a lot of that is because the metric, because the prices are so volatile in them that are used to for these models and these rate expectations, it is a little bit jumpy and perhaps we can't take them um, with too much uh, strength. So you have to take them for they are a bit of a pinch of salt, but at one point yesterday, the, the Fed swaps were pricing 100 basis points of cuts by the end of this year. Um, the BOE traders were pricing in no hike at the next meeting, but interest rate futures had it as a 50% chance that they wouldn't raise at the next meeting. Um, today, that sits at 54% for unchanged, 46% for 25. Um, ECB current, uh, sorry, Fed currently uh, pricing a 67 percent chance of a 25 pip hike and a 33 uh, percent chance of unchanged um, and again what happens today in ECB I think is going to be a bit of a yardstick for what the market expects the Fed to do um, so my expectations for the ECB today um, I'm 60 40 on the fact that they will go a 50 pip hike. I think there is a higher chance that they may go 25 um, purely because they want to be showing the market uh, that they in control of things. Um, I think a complete pause would be a, a bit of a shock move. Um, so I'm, I'll give, I'll give that a very low possibility, but uh, yeah, I think a 50, but obviously strong talk about this, what's happening in the banking sector and how they're monitoring it. And also they'll likely point to the fact that they have got tools in place to use for these kinds of situations. As I said, they've been building these since Lehman's, the banking crisis in Europe, GFC, all that sort of stuff um, for these very events. So if these tools are up to the task, they're going to pull them out of their hat and use them. Um, and that should mean that they don't have to use monetary policy um, for these types of problems. So I expect them to probably go a 50, speak a lot about these issues, speak a lot about the fact they've got it covered um, and that monetary policy doesn't need to be uh, potentially at all against these sort of problems. They can carry on with policy whilst using their other tools to, to, to provide liquidity if needed. Um, so for... Euro dollar, and just to quickly answer uh, Michael's question, he's asking why I've got duplicated charts. Um, pure and simple, I've got charts that I use mainly for trading that have all my levels on. Um, and then what I also like to do, um, as you can see there, it's all nice and colorful. What I also like to do is keep charts with very little on, just to give me a nice clean view of things. Um, so I'll often have charts that have very little tech on or just highlight, you know, the important things um, just to give me a bit of a different picture, a bit of a cleaner picture. So that's, that's why I run uh, two lots of those and I'm a bit lazy and I can not tidy up my charts as, as often as I probably should do. So they do tend to get a bit messy and I like to see the wood for the trees. Um, but in terms of the Euro, so pretty much we're sitting in this box um, that we've been watching. I've been quite surprised. I mentioned it the other day. The fact that the, the volatility has been fairly low in the euro dollar. Yes, it's moved around. Yes, it's jumped around, but no way near as, as much as we've seen in, in some of the other pairs. Um, you can see it here, this area, this 105s, 107s. We've had a bit of extension up to the next area, 107.60s. We all know that 108s is another big zone to look at. Um, we're pretty much bang in the middle of the zone at the moment. We had a look at the 105s yesterday. I picked up some longs uh, down there. Didn't get quite down to that close 105s that I'd like to. Um, but I was happy again to, to trade the fact that uh, Credit Suisse wasn't going to end the financial universe. Um, so I jumped into that. It's 50-50 it, where it goes from here. I think if the ECB 
um, goes a 25, we should probably see that come off some um, because it would be confirmation that they are slowing. Um, I maybe wouldn't expect it to get all the way back down to these lows, but we could well get down to maybe, you know, 105 and a half, something like that. If they pause, that will bring a bigger negative reaction, in my opinion, because it would be a bit of an extreme move. Um, in that case, we may well get down back to these lows again. I don't think we would see 105 get taken out. If it couldn't get taken out amid the banking crisis yesterday, I can't see it being taken out on the ECB reacting to that banking crisis. And any pause or, or lower rate hike today is not a direct consequence of inflation or the data. Inflation's still there. Inflation's still sticky. They are still wary about it. This would be purely a financial stability move. Um, and then the market would expect them to continue hiking, even if they hiked at a slower pace for longer uh, until such time as we're over this hump. So I don't see any material reason why the euro should really suffer on them going to 25 or pausing. If they go a 50, however, I can well see this getting back to 107. Um, if it's a complete business as usual, as far as monetary policy goes for it, um, trying to get inflation under control, I would not be surprised if we maybe even hit those highs, maybe even have a look at, uh, at the very least or very most up at the 108s. Um, so I'm sitting in longs at the moment. If I've got a decent bit of margin in it, I'm happy to let that ride over the ECB and uh, look to pick up any dips going down into 105s. Guys, what are you got any, got any thoughts for uh, ECB today? Well, um, you have, we have to ask ourselves one question. Do we think yesterday the uh, various European banks have been on the phone to the ECB? <laughs> because I'm sure the ECB will want to know um, the, the the situation. I think that the um, that Credit Suisse was not the only bank on the phone to regulators and central banks, and I think that the situation is still very delicate. Uh, monetary policy will not solve any problem for the banks, of course. Uh, so yeah. 25 or 50 will make absolutely no difference um, in terms of monetary conditions. However, it will make a huge difference in terms of confidence. And I've been saying this for a few days. Um, I still think they're going to go 25 just to try to um, appease the crowd and, and you know, and, and uh, smooth, and smooth the environment, you know, a little bit. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually pause. But I think that's uh, that's an extreme uh, reaction. I don't think they want to show that, but they can easily do something like a hawkish 25. So, you know, hike 25 and say, look, we're still uh, looking at inflation, of course, uh, but we're also sensitive to the financial environment, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and... Um, and they could do it this way. So I think it's going to be a 25. They could do 50. If they do 50, even though it really makes no difference uh, to the banks, um, I think the market's really not going to like it. And I think the ECB knows that. So that's why I think they're going to go 25. Yeah. And I will buy you lunch if ever I see blah, blah, blah in an ECB statement. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Wait until uh, Stornaras becomes the chairman, the Greek guy. <laughs> There'll be lots of blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Kay, uh, what are your thoughts? Well, in the, in the room this morning, I... I you covered every base. <laughs> yeah, I, I found like seven or eight different possible scenarios that I might not have uh, found all of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, the... I'm also somewhere between 25 and, and 50. Uh, it's either going to be a dovish 50 or a hawkish 25. Um, but then there's, there's, there's always the, the trump card, right? About uh, asset uh, uh, program. Um, and that may be somewhere where they tweak. And that's also my idea for next week, the Fed actually, that they may uh, do something about uh, not continue to tighten financial conditions too much right now. So they may uh, just keep the monetary policy um, on the path. And I think it's, it's like, it's it's kind of what the market is trading right now as well, right? Um, they, they, if you see Euro sterling, uh, Euro crosses are, are moving back up. Um, 
So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm anywhere in between 25 and 50. I, I'm, I'm not going to, to say I'm 100% confidence with, uh, with, with, with this or that one, and then see uh, what, uh, what Lagarde does to uh, mess it all up uh, in, the, in the press conference. Um, but um, I agree with, with Stelios that, and uh, I've also said that in the room. Don't forget that Lagarde is French, and uh, the two banks. Who got hammered the most yesterday at least where the most um noise was made about was bnp and uh, sokjin so um i her being french i'm not going to to rule out that she would take some of it into into account um but yeah and, and as you say i think if um Unless they go really gung ho and uh, and and like oh no this is bad uh, we don't raise and uh, we don't know uh, about the future the future part either because of of the of the banking situation then your euro dollar is going to collapse but if 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 that is ruled out then uh, then I think euro may be a, maybe a buy on uh, a buy on dips um, as you yeah. said Ryan. Um, the big level, yeah, you, you were you were showing the low 105s, but there's there's a big big zone, uh, 104, 60, 80, uh, that I'm watching. Um, yeah, I've got that the prior down there. and the and uh, what is it, 61.8 or so of the um, of the uh, the move up from uh, 95 up to uh, to 110, um, and uh, that is to me going to be the big test zone. Um, and I'm more than willing in in current conditions to try and uh, and and catch a knife. I was waiting for it actually to be tested yesterday, um, on on the big uh, on the big drop and uh, and the big panic in euro. I, I was like waiting for that level, and I would have tried to catch a knife, but it didn't go uh, it didn't go that low, um, which supports your view that uh, euro is probably like eighty percent chance that it's uh, going to be a buy on dips. Yeah. No, you're quite right, and uh, I think the only the only thing that might be slightly concerning is we do keep making a, a, a lower low each time. Um, and I've, I've been talking about this yesterday. I, I spoke about this in the room uh, this morning as well about you know people who want to look for tops and bottoms um, and giving yourself a reason why um, you need to look for the signals. So I you know I still wouldn't rule out a test this 105. It is going to be a bit of a a zone from there you know, down to that 38.2 fib, which was also a prior support and resistance area, um, you know, 104 and a half, that sort of area. So, you know, it's not, may not be one line. This, we may get a decent break under here, um, you know, 105, 104.90, um, but then that's where it may run into trouble. And you've got to look at the volatility in, the, in this pair as well. The, the volatility is, is pretty well contained given everything that's gone on um, the last few days. Uh, Euro sterling. Oh, this one I managed to mess up completely yesterday. Um, I got I jumped in at uh, the eighty seven forties just for a little bit of a pickup. Um, that soon got taken to the woodshed, um, and then I was trying to be a dick for a tick down here into this area that I've been watching for bloody ages, um, and then I didn't get anything on. And here we are sailing back above eighty eight again. So kicking myself a bit for that one, but we can't trade backwards. So have to move on up. I am going to be looking at this one as well to add to my core longs. If we get a move down here on the ECB, maybe going on pause. Um, I think that may be a bit far fetched to see us back down there again. Um, but you never know. You never know. Um, Dolly Yen quickly, um, and then I'll pass it over to uh, Kay. Um, what's standing out for me in Dolly Yen is that the recoveries aren't really holding that strong. Um, talking about picking the bottoms we had this banking low on Monday the US banking low we made a new low yesterday on the Credit Suisse stuff only by six pips uh, but for me the optics of that say that you know maybe it's not as strong on this low as it as it could be if we'd have stopped somewhere around here 132.50 on this low then we would have had a stepping up now I've got a bit of confidence that you know, a bottom may be developing here. It still might be, but I don't like it when a when a let's call it a, an event low gets taken out again. Um, it suggests that the market isn't ready um, to find a proper bottom, and there is still a chance that we could head lower. Um, and as I say, the bounces so far 
aren't looking too hot off this low. So, you know, we've come down. We're a bit middling at the moment. I think it's 50-50 here. I think a lot of the market is going to be waiting, as I said, what the ECB does, and then they're going to extrapolate that across to the Fed. So if the ECB go on pause, the market's probably going to cement a pause from the Fed. Um, and then, obviously, we're going to see more changes in rate expectations because we're 67% pricing a 25 pip hike. So if that flips, we're likely to see yields come down again and probably dollar yen may be going through these lows and heading a bit lower. Um, so really, it's it's a strange situation to be in where the fate of the dollar rests potentially in the hands of the ECB, Kay. Yeah, that, well, actually, you, you made an, ex, uh, an absolutely great point there. Because I, and I was saying this morning as well in the, in the, in the, in the room, um, what's left, if, if the dust and, and when the dust will settle, what's left is actually slightly negative data in the US. And yep. um, that's why I'm a little, um, no, I'm not going to say surprised because I think uh, stuff like cable, for instance, is more driven by, uh, by Euro sterling than, uh, than actually uh, cable itself right now. Um, but I can take over the screen for, for just a couple of minutes. I'm not going to, to go over too much stuff, but um, there's a couple of interesting, uh, interesting things uh, to watch and to um, a couple of instruments that, uh, that, that may be really uh, big movers come uh, um, post ECB, yeah. perhaps even into the Fed and stuff. Um, so go first ahead, of mate. all, yeah. First of all, I'm going to have a quick, uh, quick peek at what happened yesterday in uh, in the in this Euro Swiss, right? So we had this um, this double um, double dip, um, SVB, then Credit Suisse, um, and uh, but but worth noting that we held the November low, and we haven't gone to test the 61.8, which is just uh, below 97. That means to me that. Um, Yesterday, somebody woke up and said, "Like, hey, hang on, this is perhaps not really, uh, not really great um, for uh, for uh, what's happening in uh, in Switzerland." Um, so that to me is 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 telling. So this zone to me here, ninety seven ten down to ninety six sixteen euro Swiss is going to be extremely important if ever if ever we retest that. I'm also thinking in in the back of my mind that we saw a bit of uh, SMB activity in there. Because we know they are both sides of the of the um, of the market right now, I guess they were here on moves back up uh, above parity, and I am going to take a wild guess that they were there yesterday as well to uh, to support the markets. And they are more they they are trading more actively than uh, than most of the uh, the long term traders. So <laughs> I, I I really think we can't rule it out they were there yesterday. Um, but also it it it. Um, it does uh, uh, come in line with, with my thought about phase one, two, and three of, uh, of what's happening in Swiss franc. Um, I think two interesting things to, to look at is gold in this, in this environment. Um, we've seen when S SVB uh, um, started to quiet down, we've seen this, this is the episode of, of last week, right? Um, and then we've seen when SVB was quieting down, the regional banks were quieting down immediately. Gold uh, came came back off. Credit Suisse came up, bang, uh, we, we we really shot up again. So this one is now exactly what what the market is going to trade. The speculators are going to trade, and and I'm calling it speculators because I I don't know whether uh, there's there's real funds in there, but I I do think there are. Um, but what is going to be traded if there's uh, crap happening uh, um, everywhere else? So keep an eye on that one. I'd say, well, your first hinge is, is going to be the 1900, but uh, I think keep a close eye on what's happening around 1880 if it, if it goes back down there. And if the market thinks that we are not out of the woods yet, that may be a springboard to, to try and retest those, uh, those latest 19, uh, 1960s highs. And then the other one, silver that spiked um i have this uh i have this zone here around uh, 22 call it 22 and a quarter on uh, on on silver that spiked and came back down and i think the reason is the reason why gold is outperforming silver is that um when there's trouble everywhere um 
silver being uh, a, a um, commercial or manufacturing or, or, or industrial, that's the word I was looking for, metal, if, if there's crap everywhere around, this is going to, to underperform. But if we see the, the yields um, staying low, if we see um, that actually the, the real economy is not going to be more affected than, than what it is right now, um, then I'm going to be uh, to be reloading this stuff on uh, on on any blip down in 21. So I'm going to really really watch very closely what is happening in uh, in in silver in the economic the real economic data um, going uh, going forward from here. Um, I'm I'm sorry, but truly I'm not watching uh, not watching uh, platinum. But I I think it's the same a bit the same thing as um, as uh, which was happening that I think platinum could be like in the same line uh, or perhaps a bit more speculative than uh, than uh, silver perhaps. Um, on the dollar Swiss brand, I'm, I'm going to have a quick look at it. You know, I'm not trading this, right? I mean, I mean if I trade something, it's going to be crosses in Swiss, but I think in, in, in normal times, the dollar Swiss is just a euro dollar, um, uh, really. Um, but here, I think, um, I, I know that some people were looking at the, this 93, 15, 20 yesterday. Um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's back down, but it's, it's so un, uncertain what is going to happen on the Swiss uh, uh, right here and now and in the upcoming sessions that I'm gladly going to leave that alone. If yesterday's US data wouldn't have been bad, I would have bought this yesterday. And I know people trade it the other way around because because of uh, risk. But uh, with what's happening in Switzerland, if if I'm going to, and and I know I'm I'm against most of you guys, but if knowing what's happening in Switzerland and and thinking what I what my line of thought is, if the U.S. numbers wouldn't have been bad, this this one would uh, would would uh, go and spike again up here. I think now we have to me we. We've broken this this trend line here. Uh, as long as we're below in the more medium term, 94, 94 and a half, 94 three quarters, that's the zone you want uh, you want to you want to really uh, look at. And in the meantime, you're you're here, 93, 15, 92, 90, 95. That's that's where you look at it. But um, I want to look at a bit of other stuff. As I said, euro dollar to me, this is the biggest zone here. Um, Interestingly, is that it held a re a short um, support line here yesterday around 105.10. So that's what um, uh, Ryan already showed. 105 low 105 is going to be important today. And on the other side, um, we will be starting to look at the 106.80 figure and above there, big zone 107 and a half, 107.65, 70. That's going to be a big zone here. If if that succeeds to break today, then we are uh, off to the races again, in my opinion. Um, cable, a bit of a strange one. Uh, I bought this yesterday, already managed some stuff around, which I'm happy about. But this looks like a bit of a channel now, right? And um, we've also heard that there were decent offers around there, which has been confirmed, 122. Yesterday, couldn't hold the 121.40 in all the uncertainty. So that is going to be a decent marker on the top side once more. Um, and then we we're trading around this 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 12070 really if we are below um, the 12010 comes in supported there's a very interesting zone to me uh, I know we've been uh, we've been through it a couple of times but I still want to look have a close look at what would happen if it gets back down in the 119 and a half 119 three quarter zone uh, at any time but that's in my opinion going to be more the dollar telling us or what's happening in in, in euro sterling perhaps. Than, than the sterling side. But in the meantime, 120.10.15, 121.40, that's going to be uh, the range I'm observing um, going forward. And then with keeping like this, this, this bigger one, uh, this bigger one in mind with one, yeah, 120.10 here. It's, it's already good enough, uh, it seems. Now, and I'm not going to take much more time, but I want to look at some, at, at this one. So we had this break on the Aussie Kiwi below here, and 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 yesterday, and many of us were along, and some of us got got hosed here because we went through the prior low, and unfortunately got stopped out. But then at the end of the day, I was looking at this, and I went like, oh, hang on a bit. Um, perhaps I'm going to 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 keep it 
I'm down to there. I had a stop loss in place, which which I think got, got saved by half a people or so at some stage. Um, and then came the double whammy out, um, worse than expected uh, Kiwi data and better than expected uh, Aussie uh, jobs report. And we raced back through this uh, this this downside uh, wedge, which where the uh, the top side is about 107.40, and we're back already above that that zone that I was watching uh, before. So I got a bit of a lucky shot um, on on my lungs. Managed it already a little bit, but um, I'm going to be very tempted if uh, ever we get a retest of this 107, uh, call it 30, 40 zone. And then uh, starting to watch again those previous uh, lows or, or even the 107, the figure. So that for the Aussie Kiwi. Um, yeah, um, the rest, If um, I think I saw something. Somebody else was trying to let me go back onto the questions. Um, yeah, gold. Um, Michael, I'm, I'm absolutely no interest in, in Bitcoin, but we spoke a little bit about gold. Gold, Euromix, yeah, we can look at it. It's um, the issue with Euromix now, um, Michael, is, is, is the ECB today and, and the fickleness of the markets. And we, we're seeing this Euromix really uh, um, trying to push back uh, against those uh, those those resistances here, uh, 2035 perhaps than the previous highs. But to me, really, um, this one here from where we started that, uh, that, that last sharp move lower, that's the one that should be monitored if, uh, if, if you put a trend line here. I, I don't think it's worth too much, although the, the, the body of the candle stopped there as well. So perhaps here already in this zone, but it's, it's very trading before the ECB is a, is a, is a bit of a risky one. Um, on the underside, I think we need to now get back below and stay below. Not, not only get back below, uh, but stay below um, this one here, 1990. If it goes below and stays below, then I think the, the whole panic story is, uh, is over. Um, on the dollar mix, we are seeing a bit similar situation, right? Spike higher, panic, uh, whatever, but we haven't reached yet uh, the, the... We're trading around here, are we? Yeah, around 1910, we're trading around here. But again, here, this, this one here, 1928, 1926-28, that may be where if we break above, the panic is really there and we are going back to closer to 20. But as long as we're staying below there, the panic may just subside. And um, get back below 1885-90, we may have a look, uh, a look lower again. But for the time being, it's a bit of a hot potato, this uh, emerging market. Uh, for, for if, if the market quiets down and, and we, we are going to need some some decent economic data to, to support that. If the market quiets down, then we are going to see EM coming back. Um, dollar rand quickly, as we have been spe spoken, speaking about many, many times, low 18s, that's where it holds and that's where it bounces from. I don't think there's any, there's much more to, to look at. Uh, top side, 18.45, 18.50 for the time being. So you've got about 50 big figures to play inside. If we get above 18, uh, 18, 50, 55 again, I think uh, there's a room to go and see the 1870s again and then see uh, see what happens there. See this one, the prior highs for the time being, the market is hesitant to take them out. So I guess we are in a bit of a range. And that's it for me. Back to you, right? Thank you, mate. Still, did you want to have a look at platinum or anything? If you got it. Uh, uh, not really. I don't really. Haven't traded platinum in a little while. I mean, the, the, the big picture for me, platinum is is worse than silver in terms of uh, its uh, correlation with um, 
economic activity because you know silver uh you know it's it's been used as a monetary metal you know people hoard coins and bars and stuff not the same with platinum at least not in the same um magnitude so if you're trading platinum you are trading the economy a lot more than you are trading with silver and that's why i always prefer to be on silver uh, you know unless i see massive underperformance in the you know platinum silver ratio or something like that then i'll have a look at platinum but i always prefer silver and if you look at the yeah. chart of, of platinum i mean i can actually let me show it hold on yeah i don't think i even got it don't worry. Uh, and, no, and, and if you can look, because I, I forgot to cover it, but I mean, uh, no or, I think we're in a, in the broad interesting zone as well, 62, 62. Yeah, I was going to look at oil as well. Yeah, I mean, okay. we are in a big, big, big zone there, right? And we can't forget yeah. the SPR bias as well. Uh, please uh, proceed, uh, Mr. Stelios. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so talking about platinum, we're in a very similar, I mean, if you look at the silver, it's the same, same kind of descending uh, channel which is uh, corrective after this big move from the COVID lows to the uh, 2021 highs, but it's been correcting for a long time, right? And this is why, because the Fed has been raising, raising rates, uh, the dollar has been rallying. And, you know, if you if you look at it, uh, maybe platinum less so, but um, gold and silver, if you, if you take a step back and look at how they've performed over the past couple of years, they've done pretty well. I mean, especially gold, given what... The Fed has been doing with the rates and, you know, the, the hikes and the tightening. I mean, it's held up really, really well. So, you know, imagine what happens when they go into pause or even cutting. It just goes out completely to the highs. But platinum, I you know, it's a difficult situation here because we're in the we're in no man's land. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, if you ask me what I want to do with it, well, I would prefer to buy it. But I'm not I, I'm not as um sure let's say or confident as i am with uh gold and silver so yeah yeah thanks mate just a quick quick look and we're on yeah. a you know it's worth noting we're on a on confidence support so we have the 200 dma and the 50 percent fib of that big move lower so you know you could say that we are at at support but you know it's uh it's a bit tricky yeah Anyway, cool. I'll give it. I'll give it back to you. Take a last couple of things before we shut up for the day. Um, I did want to have a look at. Oh, I know Ali was asking about that. Can you see my screen? I hope so. Yes, we can. Good, good, good. Um, so we had a bit of a break of this zone down here, um, and even the seventy zone. A bit of a carve up. Um, this zone has been, you know, making a bit of a box eighty two fifty down to these low seventies. Uh, we went through that. We went through the prior low at 70. We went through the 50 fib of uh, this whole move from here. So a bit of a weak looking picture for oil. It's the lack of bounce is the worrying part from for me from here. We are in a bit of support, as Kay pointed out. It gets chunky from here down to the 62, 61s. Um, so it's making a bit of a fist here at uh, this low area around uh, the low 66s. So that's your marker for now. If we hold that again on a test. That's going to suggest maybe a bit of a bottom in place. How it reacts if we bounce up to these broken levels is what you're going to need to be looking at. If we get up there, can't get through it, then maybe we're going to set up another little mini range going on um, for the next few sessions uh, ahead. Um, and finally, keep an eye on those yields uh, for the US. One year is still looking weak below the Fed midpoint. Um, you know, so this is below where the Fed rates are at the moment. Um, this is my sort of sentiment marker for where the market is thinking the Fed will be going. If the Fed are going to stay on their track, we should expect this to recover above. So this is going to be the driver for Fed expectations is going to play out in these sort of yields. So keep an eye on those for the rest of the data and what happens with the ECB. And on that note, another packed show. I hope we're doing you uh, right this week with all our analysis and views. Um, thank you as always to the wonderful Kay and Stelios for their inputs. And thank you, as always. So the to wonderful you Kay, the wonderful Kay and just plain Stelios. Okay, I get no, it. Yeah, and the, the, the wonderful <laughs> Kay and the Greek Stelios. I'm just, I'm just saving words. I'm just saving words. <laughs> <laughs> and Cheers, obviously man. to the viewers uh, for coming here and uh, making this show worthwhile. Have a great day ahead. Have a great ECB. We shall see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.